Kelvin Hepner with Real Agriculture. We're down at uh, the Farm Progress Show in Iowa, and we're joined by Tyler Lund of Veris Technologies. And Tyler, uh, we are continuing. Veris is one of the companies bringing, uh, continuing to see new tools come to, to market available to farmers for understanding our, our soil. I think the Veris name is known in by many farmers or agronomists for its uh, electrical conductivity mapping mm -hmm. that's been around for years. There's also machines now you're figuring out organic matter, pH, a number of other uh, char soil characteristics on the fly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We are known for electrical conductivity. That was back in 1997 where we came out with that on-the-go soil sensor. And even then we realized there's more soil properties that we want to characterize, that we want to be able to help growers better understand so they can better manage their expensive and sensitive inputs like nitrogen, and seed rates, and lime. And so we developed an on-the-go organic matter sensor, which uses an infrared and red reflectance measurement, about two inches below the surface of the soil, away from surface residue and, and soil moisture confound. We can measure the, the level of organic matter as it changes across the field. And we care about that because every percent of organic matter, more or less you have in different parts of your field, contributes 20 to 30 units of nitrogen for free. And so we got it, if we have 2% versus a 4%, we need to incorporate that into our nitrogen program so we can better manage that input. And we also developed an on-the-go pH sensor. And down here you can see we've got uh, two ion selective electrodes which measure the soil pH. And they go into the ground and measure that, that, that pH and we can have very accurate line prescriptions because of that on the go and this, this model which does stop and go pH measurements. So to what resolution do you normally run a, a cart like this? So most folks would run every 20 meters across the field and they would stop uh, at a resolution that would get you about a, a one acre grid or about three to four samples per hectare is what we're trying to go for. Okay, and that gets you pretty small zones then in terms of, of management and, and yeah. application? It does, it does. So with EC and organic matter, there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of, of, of sensor readings uh, per, per acre, per hectare. And with pH, it's going to really shrink down. So that we're putting the right amount of lime where we need it, and we're not wasting it where we don't. So how often, some of these factors don't change very much over time, how often do you, do you recommend a farmer run one of these carts over their field? We, we don't recommend, unless you're doing any land leveling or targeted manuring, that you need to run the electrical conductivity or organic matter. If you're doing drainage to get rid of salinity, you might want to come back and remap. But largely, those are the properties that are going to change over, over a millennia. So we don't need to map those again. Soil pH, if you're going to correct it in lime, you might want to get back out and either take another sensor reading, go across the field, or take some targeted lab samples. Okay, and this is all part of nutrient efficiency, understanding our soils better, conservation, all those things come together with, with yeah. having a better understanding of our soil? I mean, when we talk to growers, in reality, this is a, a, a tool that increases profitability. And when we uncover variability out in a field, you know, right there, it's going to give us an opportunity to either put more seed, more fertilizer, and better uh, utilize that good soil, or we might be able to find some areas where we can cut back. And so it's about profitability, but that does translate into sustainability and helping the environment as well. Mm -hmm. Being efficient with our new, well, exactly. only applying exactly. as much as we need. We should maybe actually also mention this cart is new this year. You can pull it behind a, a UTV. Yeah, what we did was we took the, the, the sensors that we have on a tractor-based model and, uh, and we, we optimized it to be able to go behind a UTV. So uh, it, it really reduces the, the upfront cost somebody has to encounter when they want to set up a rig. No longer do you need a tractor, a truck, and a trailer. Your UTV that you already have, or maybe you'd wanted to buy, it'll go on with that. And so you can also couple it with your soil sampling as you're out in the field. Um, it, it's really popular right now with crop advisors, seed suppliers, fertilizer dealers, anybody who's selling an input or advice and they want to do a better job by understanding of their farmer's fields, they can do that with this equipment. Okay. And I guess this time of year, harvest underway or soon underway, a good time to, uh, fall is probably a good time to, to run it? Fall is a good time to run it. We have guys who go right after the, right behind the combine to do their measurements. Uh, you know, you, we've got it set up so if you are going in a row crop, 30 inch rows, you can measure uh, in crop in a lot of situations. We've actually designed this system also in growing wheat to be able to drive with the sensors out of the ground, drive and drop them and they'll collect readings, collect the pH and only leave a small scar negligible for yields so you can actually map in growing cereals as well. So what would the advantage to that be? 
The advantage of widen the window for mapping. For timing, yeah. You could map in crop and, and leave a scar all the way across the field. But in some areas in, in Canada, maybe in the, especially in the UK, there's only a month where they're not growing a crop. And so you either map then or you find a way to do it while it's, in the, while it's growing. All right. Thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks, Kevin.